Hello everyone, today's presentation is on Android's digital twin technology and our applications to the mining industry. An outline for today's presentation, we're going to review the digital twin concept. We're going to describe types of digital twins, which range from first principles models based approaches to data driven models. We'll describe some applications of digital twins focusing on virtual instruments and instrument validation techniques. And finally, we'll review some digital twin examples, which include grinding circuit modeling and optimization, uh, mill balancing, primary crusher and conveyor overload detection, and SXEW process optimization. So the digital twin concept is basically to produce a computerized representation of a physical plant. And when we do that by taking equipment information, performance curves, P&ID drawings, elevations, and physical and physics-based models to produce a mathematical representation of the plant. And what makes it a digital twin in this case is we take live values from our actual running plant and run them in parallel to the physical plant to produce predictions about different variables and parts of the process operation which are not easy to measure. We then present that information using a user interface to the operator that highlights and, and automatically flags abnormal conditions and indicates key process variables that he can use to optimize the performance of the plant. So one type of digital twin model is based on first principles techniques and we use our ideas platform to develop these types of models. Uh, this model relies on the actual equipment information from the vendors, performance curves, uh, first principles physics models which we obtain from academia or from industry combined with actual plant operating data. We include the layout of the plant, elevations, pipe sizes, uh, tank sizes, that sort of equipment specification details. And we can produce steady state and dynamic models, which can track the chemical reactions, particle size distribution, and overall performance of the plant. And so this model, because it's first principles, it can be developed and run even before our plant is built. So we can start to do this work during construction. A second type of digital model is based on historical data. In this case, we take an operating plant's data, take a look at all uh, historical relationships, and we can generate predictions of variables based on actual values of other variables. And we have a wizard for this in our Metris tool, and this wizard allows us to build a virtual sensor very simply and automatically using machine learning techniques. As you can see in this slide here, uh, in this case, we had seven different variables the system was examining. I tried over 300 different model structures before it chose an optimal model structure, and it shows you the quality of fit and a plot of the predicted value versus the actual value. But in this case, there's no physical model, so these models are very quick and easy to develop, but they're used uh, ready uh, to produce predictions for single variables uh, using this machine learning technique. So once you have a digital twin, there's many different ways it can be used. Uh, we can use it to detect abnormal operation. So for anomalies, you can look at what if scenarios. We can try running different inputs to the model and see what would be the predicted value uh, for the process variables. We can run optimizations, allows us to find optimal operating points and indicate that to the operator or automatically set targets. Uh, we can provide operator guidance using meta variables. There's often values that you cannot measure but are important to the operation, such as uh, efficiency numbers and things of that nature. Uh, these can be provided to the operator so he can uh, intervene and uh, make corrections in the operation. We can have online energy mass balances and tr track particle size distributions throughout the plant. We can also create virtual transmitters. So instead of having an actual instrument or an instrument that's maybe not even available for the physical uh, parameter you're trying to measure, that uh, can be produced by a digital twin. Of course, we can also provide a lot of performance metrics that can be displayed so that the operator can identify if the performance of the plant is degraded. We can also do data validation and reconciliation. So this allows a model to compare actual live measurements to its expected values and flag any instruments that look to be out of calibration or are faulty. So today we're going to focus on the virtual instrument aspect. So in this case, we are providing a real-time indication of a value which can be used as an indicator to an operator or actually used in automatic control. So the automatic control system can, can adjust the plant uh, for the operator to get back to target. So often these are values that are difficult to measure. They might be from a laboratory analysis or a very complex analytical instrument, or it could be a very complex or expensive instrument itself involving sampling systems or nuclear sources that are difficult to maintain. Um, this type of system can also be used to detect abnormal conditions such as leaks in pipes, problems with overland conveyors, sanding in pipelines, and, and values like this which cannot be directly measured. Uh, 
We also use virtual sensors directly for automatic process control. So this can be used two ways. It can be used as a primary variable for a control. It could also be used as a redundant measurement to back up a primary instrument. So if there's a problem with the online instrument, the controls can automatically default and use a virtual instrument to continue the automation of the plant and avoid any loss of production. So this is a big a benefit for uh, improving reliability and autonomy of the controls. So along the line of instrumentation validation, uh, not only can we detect obviously faulty instruments, but we can also reconcile uh, the performance of all the instruments against each other compared to the model and what's expected. So this allows the digital twin to flag and identify instruments which are coming out of calibration or have otherwise faulted. And this can be done and corrected before you have a in, uh, lost production or other impacts in your process operation or accounting system. So it's, it contributes again to uptime reliability and can also be used to help you prioritize maintenance activities and identify instruments that require uh, servicing. So now just some examples of digital twins. In this case, it's on the grinding circuit, which is comprised of a sag mill in series with a ball mill. As you can see in this diagram, uh, the gray blue uh, symbols are actual measurements from the process instrumentation. The green symbols are values that are being predicted by the digital twin, which are used in the control optimization. And this allows us to find the correct uh, speed for the mill, the correct ball charge for the mill, and the correct loading of ore to optimize its throughput and performance. For ball mill circuit, again, you can see that all the green symbols showing particle size distribution and densities, uh, specific energy consumptions on the mill. These are all values predicted by digital twins. Allows us to reduce variability of particle size, uh, minimize specific energy consumption, and water consumption. So this slide just shows some performance uh, figures comparing in the blue what is typically achieved just by implementing advanced control. Uh, adding a digital twin uh, allows us to improve the strategy and add extra layers of automation. So the figures here shown in green are showing the typical uplift that we've achieved uh, by adding digital twin over and above an ex existing advanced control solution. That digital twin model, the grinding circuit, can be ex extended to cover the entire mill so you can track uh, mine to mill performance. So this allows us to uh, go from crushing, grinding, to flotation, to even the thickener and tailings handling circuit. We can run what-if scenarios as uh, information about the ore coming from the mine is changing. We can determine what is going to be an optimum uh, compromise for grade versus recovery, net production, recirculation, energy consumption, etc. This example was done with uh, BHP in Chile. Uh, this was a paper that was published on this application. In this case, we are using a digital twin for primary crushing control, as well as the uh, overland conveyor. And so we were making sure that the performance of the primary crusher was being maintained and making sure that the overland conveyor was running at its optimal capacity and detecting any anomalies in, this, in the equipment. In the case of the overland conveyor, the digital twin is, is a very, very good solution. Uh, it can model all the elevation changes and track the ore loading on every segment of the conveyor. So as the ore is traveling uh, through that system, doing different elevations, the power consumed by the uh, conveyor drives can be plotted. And by having that close approximation of the loading and distribution across that overland profile, the correct power can be estimated compared to actual power. And this allows you to do uh, de early detection of any friction increases that could indicate conveyor failure. It can also reconcile the weightometer, so your actual tons per hour measurement is matching what you expect and you're fully using the, the capacity of the conveyor and not compromised due to a, a drift in your weightometer. This slide shows some examples of where the friction on the conveyor was detected to be high, which would alert the operator automatically to inspect uh, the equipment in the field and as well as an alarm condition when the friction was extremely high, which is indication of a jammed roller, uh, which would do a lot of damage. It wasn't detected and reacted uh, immediately. This final application is on a solvent extraction electrowinning circuit. In this case, the primary control variable is the copper sulfite concentration in the cell house. Uh, as you know, the efficiency of the cell house is dependent on the concentration of the copper sulfate. If it's too weak, the efficiency of the cell is decreased and you just use the power as heat, energy is lost. If it's too strong, you can have precipitation of the copper sulfide in your piping circuit. 
So it's very important that it's kept in a very optimal range. Now, the problem with this application is that the copper sulfate concentration is only available from a lab sample every few hours. And of course, in the cell house, you're constantly removing cathodes, stripping plates, uh, having to adjust the power and current depending on power availability and cost. So to track the actual concentration of the circuit, is very important and the digital twin makes that possible. That allows us to automatically regulate the addition rate of strong electrolyte into the circuit to maintain concentration at its optimal level. In addition, there's uh, inorganic salts and the organic chemicals which must also be maintained in the circuit for optimal cathode operation. Uh, the digital twin can help us make sure that those values are met. Thank you very much and that concludes the presentation on digital twins.